Good morning, creative. This is Miss Allison coming to you from the Fayetteville Public Library. I hope you're all doing well and you had a great holiday season. Um, I am sitting here tucked away in one of our study rooms uh, in the new children's area because it's a little bit loud out in the main space. They are vacuuming and tidying up and making the, the new area nice and spiffy for when we open, which is coming very soon. And we'll look forward to you making a visit. Until then, we're going to be nice and cozy in here, uh, reading some stories about winter time, and then I am going to bring in some little helpers to tell me the third, or tell you the third of today's three stories. Um, let's get started. The first one I'm going to share with you is called Brimsby's Hats, and let me move the computer over a little so you can see the book, Brimsby's Hats. Once, in the quiet countryside, a hat maker lived in a little cottage. His best friend visited every day. Brimsby would make the most wonderful hats, and his friend would make the most wonderful tea. Together, they would have the most wonderful co conversations. I hope you have a friend you have wonderful times with, too. Looks like they're really enjoying themselves. When the hats were finished, they sent them to customers all around the world. This was how it was for many years. Until one morning, the friend said he'd be leaving to travel far away. You see, it was his dream to become a sea captain. The next day, the hat maker gave his friend a brand new hat. It fit perfectly. And then he wished his friend the best of luck and waved him goodbye. There he goes. The hat maker worked for many quiet days after that and had many quiet cups of tea. They weren't nearly as wonderful as his friend used to make. It was quiet, very quiet, too quiet. So one day the hat maker realized he had become awfully lonely. Yeah, looks like it is pretty quiet there without his buddy. Hmm, I wonder if he's gonna do something about that. He set out on a walk looking to make some new friends and wore his favorite hat. Isn't that a pretty snowy scene? We've had it look like that here a couple of days, haven't we? Yeah. After traveling all day, the hat maker came upon a tree full of birds. He thought the birds would make very nice friends and said, hello, hello. The birds didn't hear him. You see them up in the tree? Looks like they are very busy indeed. What are they doing? Let's see. They were hard at work shoveling the snow out of their nests and keeping the cold wind from blowing out their fires. Oh my goodness, they look pretty miserable, chilly. I don't know if they could keep up with the snow. Oh my goodness. The hat maker stood there all alone and watched the busy birds as the snow fell and the wind blew. Then after it had grown dark, he returned home through the silent snow. It does look like a silent scene, doesn't it? Look at all that snow. He sat in his chair and looked out the window. After some time, he put his cup down. He gathered his tools and he took down some of his hats. Now what could Brimsby be up to? Hmm. Then he went to work. He worked all night measuring and marking, cutting and stitching. Mm, I'm very curious, aren't you? When morning came, the hat maker packed everything up and carried it through the snow. He found the tree full of busy birds and he worked just a little bit more. You see him at the top of the ladder? He's busy, busy. Look at this. When he finished, the birds had new homes. The hats kept the snow out of their nests and stopped the cold wind from blowing out their fires. The birds weren't busy anymore. How fun is that? I think I'd like to live in a hat in a tree if I were that tiny. <laughs> and they're all different too. 
very creative. So they all talked. They talked about hats. They talked about snow shovels. They talked about whether lemon cookies are better than worms. What do you think? You prefer lemon cookies or worms? That's what I thought. <laughs> and when it got late, the hat maker said goodbye to his new friends and walked home. That night, the birds went to bed in warm houses and they were very happy. Look how snuggly they are. Isn't that fun? And they're sleeping. Oh my goodness, they're so sound asleep. They weren't the only ones. Look how snuggly he is too. Yeah. From then on, the hat maker and the birds would see each other quite often. Sometimes the hat maker would visit the birds and sometimes the bird, birds would visit the hat maker. There they are. <laughs> and look, the birds are wearing little hats too. <laughs> that Brimsby is very talented. But every once in a while, they would all take a very long journey. There they go. They'd travel to a seaside town that was full of ships to visit an old friend. And the large group of friends would drink tea and talk about hats and shovels and ships and how wonderful it was that they'd all been lucky enough to meet one another. Lucky indeed. I think this is a wonderful book about friendship and doing nice things for others. I love this book. <laughs> okay, now I've got a super silly one for you. This is called The Thing About Yetis. The thing about yetis is they love winter. Look at his little toy there. It's a tiny yeti. They love waking up on snowy and quiet mornings and drinking hot chocolate with their favorite stuffed toy. Is that something that you like to do too? I bet. <laughs> they love sliding down hills on their bottoms. Look at his face. <laughs> Building big snow castles and pretending they're Godzilla knocking that snow castle down. They love ice skating, Yeti style, which looks like on your belly. <laughs> that would be cold. Yetis make the best snowballs on the planet and the best snowmen too. Look how big those snowballs are, look at that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but sometimes winter can be tough, even for a Yeti wind blowing. Ooh, it makes it seem even colder. After all, yetis get cold too. Really, really cold. And when their snowy fur finally dries, it gets a little poofy. Isn't that great? <laughs> I think he looks fantastic. Very soft. <laughs> On those days when yetis just can't get warm and the box of hot chocolate is empty, Yetis can get downright crabby. Look at their faces. Can you make a crabby face? Urgh. So here's a little secret for you. The thing about yetis is that sometimes they miss summer too. They miss playing outside for hours and hours on long sunny days. See them with a pool and throwing water balloons. They miss looking for little creatures by the sea and having sea monster beauty contests. <laughs> they miss building big sand castles and pretending to be Godzilla. Look at him knock down the sand castle. <laughs> they miss zipping down splashy slides on their bellies. Aren't they having fun? Look at that. <laughs> They miss this, or wishing on a shooting star, the glowing light show of hundreds of fireflies, and the sound of crickets on warm summer nights. Those are some of my favorites too. Yep. The thing about yetis is that yetis do love winter because on the very coldest, wettest, windiest winter days, yetis know just what to do. They make the warmest, coziest, calmest summer day right at home. 
That looks like a good way to spend an especially cold, wet, and gray day. You could do that at home. You could pretend that you've got a beach inside your house. Put out a beach towel and some toys. Look, he's got his flip-flops and sunglasses. That's a good way to entertain yourself when it's too cold to go outside. <laughs> All right, well, those are the two books, but now I'm going to bring in some little friends who are going to help me with this last story, which is called The Mitten, written by Jan Brett. So I'm going to turn my laptop, and I'm going to show you the felt board, and I'm going to come go out of the picture so that you can look at all of my little felt piece friends. There we go. All right. Here we go. Once there was a boy named Nicky who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother Baba did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you will never find it. But Nicky wanted snow white mittens and finally Baba made them. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I'll look to see if you're safe and sound and then I'll look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. So off Nicky went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size. He decided to stay. But then a snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat, and it was then that he saw the mitten, and he wiggled in, feet first. Here we go. That mitten's gonna have to stretch a little bit to make room for the rabbit and the mole. Oh my goodness, there they are. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved right over. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have to stretch this mitten out again. I don't know if they can all fit in here. Oh my, it's getting pretty snug. <laughs> the, mole, uh, the mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled, but not being one to argue with someone covered in prickles, they did make room. But as soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But then they saw the owl's glinty talons and let him right in. I would too. <laughs> Let's see if we can fit all these critters in here. Oh, we're having to stretch that mitten out some more. <laughs> Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. Oh, the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. Oh my goodness, can we make him fit? There's the badger. Let's see. Yep, I think they're gonna fit, just barely. <laughs> it started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave the fox lots of room. I bet they did. Here he comes. Oh my goodness, look at all of them. They are crowded in there. <laughs> Will they fit? Will they fit? Let's see. Just barely. Get that hedgehog to poke out of there. <laughs> the rabbit. Oh my goodness, look at that. <laughs> A great bear lumbered by. 
he spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, his, he began to nose his way in. A bear! The animals were packed in as tightly as could be. But what animal would argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged to many times its size. But Baba's good knitting held fast. I don't know, guys. Can we get them all in? Let's see. Look at all of these critters sharing that mitten. Oh my goodness, they're gonna have to squirm around a little bit to make room. But I think they're gonna make it. Yep. <laughs> Look at all that. <laughs> Along came a meadow mouse, though, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the great bear's nose. <laughs> and the bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Uh, 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 chew! And the force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. On his way home, Mickey saw a white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound, and then she saw that he still had his new snow white mittens but that is how they looked <laughs> do you think that his grandma was a little bit confused about how one had ended up looking that way <laughs> i bet she was too but he came back with both of them i hope you enjoy that story it's a classic and it's one of my favorites and i love the thought of all those animals snuggling up inside that mitten Creative, it's been so nice to spend time with you today, and I hope that we get some more snow sometime soon that you can go outside too and have a great time. I will see you again soon. Take a look at those mittens one more time. <laughs> Bye!